Let's do a fun video today. We're going to stress test function calling with chat models. We are going to have 10 simple functions and their definitions, and then we're going to move on to 20 more complex functions and their definitions. We're going to learn about how to auto generate questions for both. And then we're going to end up having 100 questions to ask the GPT using the function calling to see how accurately you can choose the right function to answer the question given 10 functions and being asked 100 questions for those 10 functions and also 20 com more complex functions while doing that we're going to learn about tenacity retry this decorator allows a function if it fails to be retried in this case we're going to wait for one second for five attempts in the case if open ai chat completions fail we are also going to go through this questions list the half of the functions are math related and the other half are string operations related in Python. We're going to loop over the questions. So we're going to do this two ways, but once with a loop. And actually we're going to see how many times it picks the correct function. We're all going to see if there are any parsing errors. We're going to log them and we're going to print them. Also, we're going to learn how to do this concurrently. Obviously, going making 100 calls sequentially takes a long time. But concurrency actually handles it in real time, in the parallel. It's much, much faster. We're going to use concurrent features for that. The list of questions come is a list of dictionaries, with, which comes with a question and the function that needs to be assigned. So we can compare which function the GPT have chosen to the appropriate function for the question. As you can imagine, it was really difficult to come up with questions and also assign the correct function. So therefore, I've gotten GPT-4 to write this file, which then ge automatically generates the questions and saves them. This is the 10 function, the questions for the 10 function version. And this generates the questions for the 20 function person version and saves them to the appropriate files like this. You can visit the Echoive AI Academy I created at echoive.live, which has all my videos, 140 plus free coding videos. You can also find their descriptions and find the code download links at patreon it's echohive.live link will be in the description so let's begin with the files that generate the questions as you see in the first 10 functions we have five simple math functions and five string operation functions so in the generator we have a list of the math function names and the string function names and the list of questions is empty so we loop for 100 times uh, half of the time by choosing random obviously less than this a random choose a number between zero and one so half the time we pick one of the math functions we randomly choose out of the arithmetic functions and then we can concatenate we add this dictionary question being a random number selected and the function being the function that was selected and then we go through the math functions uh, according to which function was selected by the random randomness Otherwise, if the other half of the time we do the same for the, the string operations and at the end we, we append to the list of questions and then we write that to the question 10.py and in the case of the 20, it's the exact same. It's just a little bit longer, obviously, because there's twice the amount of functions. All these files will be available at Patreon, by the way, if you want a quick download, link will be in the description. So I'm going to go ahead and delete these question 10 and question 20 and come back to the generator file and I'm going to run this and this should run and generate question 10.py with 100 questions and we print that there is 100 the length of the list is 100 list is the same to generate 100 questions out of the 20 functions that we have and now we have done that okay 100 questions for the second round so we're going to import the descriptions from the function 10, right? At the end, we have the function descriptions. Is the function descriptions have to fit the schema. We have talked about this in other videos. You have to give it a name, description, and you describe the parameters as an object. A and the B are the two numbers. In this case, is we're performing addition. And we do say both A and B are required. And we do the same for all the functions that's it and we from the question 10 obviously from it says our questions list of questions so in the main.py file we import it from that file 
we import OpenAI, we import Tenacity, and we use the Tenacity retry. Uh, we do the we use the fixed retry ability as a decorator over the GPT call. GPT call takes in a model, messages, descriptions, and the user input, and we give it the functions as the descriptions to so the functions which we have imported. And function call is auto, so we're gonna let GPT choose. We receive the response, and we do actually check for if we get a regular response and not a function response so we can print it this hadn't happened when i was testing so that's good we usually don't want this to occur when we're doing function calls i guess it really depends on your use case then if that's not the case and if the function call is in the response then we get the function call then we try to parse the arguments with json.loads because arguments are going to contain the arguments that needs to go into the function Otherwise, we return false. We actually are counting those false falsities. And we just return the name of the function. It's correct, incorrect list includes how many times GPT was able to choose the correct function. And we count the total parsing errors in the for loop. And then we say while true, we get the list of questions which we have imported. For question in the list of questions, we print the question and then. We assign the user with that question as the user input. We say the function is whatever the function that was assigned within that question, right? So we get the question and the function that deals with that. And after that, we create a system message. We, I just said for the system message, you're a helpful assistant. Use the functions provided to you to help the user. That's it. So I didn't really give anything other than this. As user message, we just give the user input. Then we just get a called function because this GPT call is only going to return the name of the function. So we assign it to the variable called function. We call that function with GPT 3.5 Turbo. We give, we, we give it the messages, descriptions, and the user input. And then if called function is false, which means there's a parsing error because we return false here, then we add the parsing errors and then we continue the loop and then we print the call function if the call function equals to the function we append true otherwise we append false and at the end we count them to see the percentage of the correct answer so if you were to run this real quick we're going to see it going one by one see what is the concatenation of the word call function concatenate percentage correct 100 percent total parsing errors so this works like this. We can continue, but obviously this is going to take a while. So I'm just going to break out of this and then comment, comment out our loop real quick. Like this, I believe I can comment this out as well. No, actually we need to comment this in. And then we are going to uncomment this. So what this does, Sorry, I actually entirely, I had to entirely comment out the true, true while loop. So we define a correct and correct to empty. And then we have this function process questions that takes in a question, right? We do the same thing here. Messages, we call the function. Oh, everything is the same, but here we call it a concurrent proof. Futures, thread pool, executor is executor. Results is the map of all the process questions with the list of questions. Process question is this function that is being called recursively and this again and again. Sorry, we are outside of the loop. We call this function, we are outside of the function. So we call this function with list of questions and then we append them to the correct, incorrect. So what the concurrent feature does is it calls this function as many times as it needs to be for, since we deal with the list of questions. It generates concurrency based on how many number of questions we have. In this case, 100. So if you were to run this, uh, we'll see that this takes so much less time. I guess I could have put some print statements here to indicate time. Okay, I did a print statement to starting, and after when it's done, we're gonna print the correct and correct percentage anyway. So let's begin. So we have started. I'm not gonna pause the video so we can see this happening in real time. It shouldn't take too long. The other one, oh yeah, there we go, we're done. And we got one uh, GPT 3.5 Turbo 16K was able to get 100% of the questions correctly, which means for each one of these questions, for 100 of them, 
it actually was able to call the correct answer. Now let's make it a little harder. We have these other 20 more complicated functions such as Fahrenheit, the Celsius, the greatest common divisor, decimal to binary, anagram, reverse words, count occurrences, standard deviation and such. So here I'm going to comment these out and import the descriptions in the list of questions for the 20 function example. Again, I'm going to comment, leave the loop commented out because we're not going to use it. We're just going to use concurrency. Before I run this, I do want to mention I will have all these code files in my Patreon. Link will be in the description. I appreciate the Patreon support. The requirements for this is only OpenAI and Tenacity. This will be a Patreon as well. Maybe if you want a quick download, you can adapt this to your own use cases for testing purposes. So now we're going to run this concurrent function, concurrency for the 20 more complex function calling for with 100 questions. Let's just run this. I'm not going to pause the video so we can see this taking place in real time. I believe if we were to do this in a for loop, it would have taken two to five minutes in parallel, sorry, in sequential, but look, we're done in about 10 seconds and we got 100% correct. So concurrency is great. I also have another video on concurrency, making 100 calls and 20 parallel summarizations. You can check it out and you can find those videos at Echo Hive. If I were to search 100, see I have a video called 100 Simultaneous GPT for API Calls. And also we have a video of 20 documents summarized simultaneously. Even when the documents are over the context limit, more than the token count of the context limit, and a total of 150,000 tokens summarized. So check those videos out if you're interested in that. You can find the Echohive AI Academy at echohive.live. What does this mean? This means that even GPT 3.5 Turbo is pretty good at calling fun functions. Now, in my experience with the autocoder and the auto builder, I have run into some issues. Obviously, this is not a perfect process, but I just wanted to demonstrate to you that when your use case is pretty straightforward, it, I mean, it does, here we see that it, it had done in both cases 100% for 100 use cases, right? 100 instances. You both using 10 functions and 20 functions. So keep this in mind. It will run into parsing errors quite often. I have seen that, especially 3.5, especially in high temperature settings. Especially if you're returning code, it'll return the content in triple, sorry, single backtick. But you can actually implement try blocks such as we've done up here. And then instead of just returning false here, you can try to correct the issue. Okay. Yeah. I just wanted this to be a fun, quick experimental video. I hope you enjoyed this and I'll see you in the next one.